Uncle Ben here with the cure for the common sweep. Brace thyself for some extended arpeggio madness. Well, hey there, gang, and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. Using arpeggios in your soloing is the perfect way to sound melodically connected to the chord progressions that you're playing over, but unfortunately, it seems like most guitar players just learn a handful of arpeggio shapes and sweep up and down them with wild abandon, and it gets really repetitive and boring. Each one of the arpeggio shapes I'm going to show you guys today utilizes the triad of the chord that's being played at that time, as well as adding in the second and fourth degrees, or ninth and eleventh if you want to be all fancy pants about it. But before we get into them, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. And as always, full tasks for this lesson are available on my Instagram page at Ben Elder Guitars. Be sure to give me a follow over there. Look for hashtag WeekendWankShop229. Learn how to play this epic lick and upload a video of yourself shredding through it along with the hashtag WeekendWankShop. Downloadable tabs, the backing tracks that I used in this week's lesson, as well as an additional lesson on how you would apply this same arpeggio idea through all seven diatonic chords in the key of G are available to my supporters over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. The supplemental lesson and tabs are available for everybody that supports me on Patreon, even at the $1 levels. So even if you just want to give me $1 this month to say thanks for all the free lessons and stuff, you get the goods. Thanks for the support. So this lick follows a simple chord progression in the key of E major. It goes E major, C sharp minor, A major, and B major. And a lot of guitar players would just follow those arpeggios directly, you know, and play E major, C sharp minor, A, B. Now that approach right there to me is very melodically functional. I mean, it serves the point, you know, you're playing the notes of the chords that are going by behind you right there, but it doesn't add anything to the conversation, you know? It's just kind of playing what's already there in the chords, which to me is not all that interesting. Now, a long time ago, I saw a video with Paul Gilbert where he talked about, you know, taking typical arpeggio ideas and playing them in like a string skipping way, like this. And I thought that was really cool because I've never really been like a huge sweet picking guy myself. And whenever you play these string skipping, you get that cool sound where there's some picking, there's some legato, you know, some hammer rolls and pull offs and stuff. So I like the tonal variance you can get there too. The first arpeggio I'm playing here is based around E, which is again E, G sharp, and B. But I add in a few more notes on a couple of the strings right here, specifically the second degree and the fourth degree of the chord. So that way I can get some more of that kind of legato action going on. Okay, so where I'm starting here is on the 14th fret on the D string. That's my root note E. Then here on the G string, I'm gonna play three notes. I'm gonna play the G sharp here, which is the third of the chord. That's fret 13 on the G string. Now, at this point, I play the uh, 14 on the G. That's the A note, which again would be the fourth degree of that chord. And then I'm gonna hammer on to the 16th fret on the G string right here. Okay? Again, if you just played these three, that would be the E triad. With this, we're adding some stuff into here too to get some more color out of it. Then with your uh, first finger here, reach down and grab that 12th fret on the high E string. Little string skipping action right here. That's why I use my middle finger to hybrid pick that note. If you're not much of a hybrid picking guy, you could just use an upstroke, and that's fine too. 
whatever floats your boat. Okay, so now we have... Now what I want you to do is to go back down the notes you played on the G. So you're going to play the 16, 14, pull into 13. So notice there's a hammer on on the way up and a pull off on the way down. That's really important unless you're just like a godlike alternate picker. This would actually be a great kind of alternate picking exercise too if you're truly masochistic. But for me, I like to throw in the legato stuff for one because it's easier and also I just kind of like the sound of it. So, so far you should have. Next time through is a little different. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm playing the same stuff we started off with. 14th D, 13th G, 14th G, hammer to 16 G. Then when I get to the high E string here, I'm gonna play 12, 16, 14, pulling back off to 12. Now melodically right here, you know, if you just add the E and the G sharp, those are, once again, the notes that are already in the chord, the root and the third of the E chord you're playing over. But by tossing in this F sharp note right here, you get that cool extended sound of the ninth, which to me is that, you know, morning after a rainstorm kind of sound. Now the third part of this lick is kind of a big combination of everything you've played so far. So you gotta play the same stuff you began with here. So starting with that 14th D, 13th G, 14th G, hammer to uh, 16 on the G. Then on the high E string here, we're gonna play 12, 16, and then check this move out. Okay, that's 14, hammer to 16, pull back off to 14, pull back off to 12. Notice the timing though. Again, it's not like that. It's not totally straight 16s. You get that little blur of those pull-offs in there. After this, you're gonna go here to the 16 on the G. Again, string skipping, brutal stuff. Back to that 12 high E. Again, that would be me using my middle finger right there to make up for that brutal string skip. Then you gotta go down the G, 16, 14, pull to 13. And then the last thing you're gonna play here is that 14th D, 13th G, hammer on to 16. That's a lot of notes. I'll take a minute and just get that down really well. That means your entire first section here over E is like this. Again, mind the rhythmic variances and where those hammer-ons and pull-offs are falling in there. After this, the chord change goes to a C-sharp minor, and we're basically gonna play all the exact same ideas rhythmically and melodically, only applying them to the C-sharp minor here. Here's kind of the map of notes we're gonna be using. The 11th on the D, that's our root note, C-sharp. Ninth on the G, that's E, our minor third. Eleventh G, that's our fourth or eleventh, if you want to call it that, F sharp. And then the uh, uh, thirteen on the G, that's our G sharp note, which would be the fifth of C sharp. And then on the high E string here, we're gonna have uh, the ninth fret, C sharp note, there's our root. We're gonna have the eleventh fret, the ninth, D sharp. And the twelfth uh, fret here, the E note, which again is that minor third. So that shape is like root, minor third, eleventh, fifth, root, ninth, minor third. And that's definitely a big stretch right there too. Be sure to give yourself, you know, some good long, deep finger stretches before you attempt some of this stuff. You don't want to go hurt yourself. So the first part of the C sharp minor is gonna start off on that eleventh D, ninth G, eleventh G, hammering to thirteen, to the ninth high E. And then walk down the G notes like you did a second ago on the E. You're going to play 13, 11, pull to 9. Again, the hammer on and the pull off are in the exact same spots as last time. A lot of times if you're having trouble picking through a lick, just do a hammer on or a pull off for the last note on that string. It's going to give your pick time to get to where it needs to go to next. Next part of the lick, we're gonna start off with the same stuff here, 11th D, 9 G, 11 G, hammer to 13. Then on the high E string here, we're gonna go 9, 12, 11, pull to nine, okay? So now you have the first part, second part. Then we get to the third section, which has the little rhythmic-y uh, pull-off thing at the end of it. 
Now that again is starting off here on the 11th D, 9th G, 11th G, hammer to 13. Then get to the high E string here, again using my middle finger here to get me there before my pick does. We gotta play the 9, 12, 11, and this is where we have that little slur of hammer ons and pull offs. So that's 9, 12, 11, hammer to 12, pull to 11, pull to 9. Pretty typical phrase, but not something you usually see in arpeggio licks, you know? Go to the G here on 13, back to 9E. Walk down the G here, uh, 13, 11, pull the 9, and then play the triad here. 11th D, 9th G, hammer to 13 on the G. That's a whole lot of notes. Yeah, that's a tough one. Now the next one that we get to here is over an A. And this gets really cool because this is where you get into some of those more modal sounds, you know? Uh, some of those key intervals that we're tossing into some of these arpeggios, that second and that fourth, or ninth and eleventh, again, whatever you want to call it, uh, they get really different whenever you start playing around with some of those modes. You know, so in the case of the key of E major, the mode that corresponds with A, is an A-Lydian scale. And the interesting thing about an A-Lydian scale is relative to the root of A, it has a raised fourth in it. If it had a regular fourth, it's just got that Mr. Rogers major scale sound, but that raised fourth that the A-Lydian scale has makes it sound so cool. It's that dreamy Steve Vai mothership kind of sound, you know, I've always been addicted to that sound. So whenever we take this arpeggio idea where we play root third fifth, but also toss in that, you know, uh, second degree and now this raised fourth, this is where things get a little bit more modal sounding, really cool. Here's the footprint of notes we're using. We're going to play the seven on the D, that's a root note A, 6G, that's C sharp, our third. We're going to play the eight here on the G, that's a D sharp, again there's that raised fourth sound. Then you gotta play the nine on the G, that's your fifth. Again, there's the triad, three, five. Sharp four in there, makes it sound Lydian. And then on the high E string here, you're gonna have the A note here on fret five, B note on seven, that's our ninth, and the C sharp note here on uh, fret number nine, our third of the chord. So there is our map of notes. You'll notice that's barely different from the first one. The stuff that's on the G string is what feels different. But again, introducing just that one note makes all those notes sound a little bit more, I don't know how you describe that, melancholy. You know, it's that Lydian sound that I love so much. So since we're only on the A chord for a total of four beats, I chose to play the fanciest part of the lick over the A chord to get the most out of it. So it's gonna sound like this. So this is me playing that 7th D, G string here I'm going to play 6, 8, hammer to 9. On the high E string here we're going to play 5, 9, then play the 7, hammer on to 9, pull off to 7, pull off to 5, 5, 9, 7, 9, 7, 5. Then just like before you're going to reach up here and grab that 9th G, 5th high E, 9, 8, Pull the 6 on the G, then play the chord triad. So 7th uh, D, 6th G, hammer on to 9th G. Again, lots of notes. Next up is the B chord, which again is also only on there for four beats. And I chose to do something completely different here because I didn't want this to sound too you know, exercise -y, just playing the same idea over and over and again. This is a little bit tricky. I predict this will probably give most of you guys the most trouble. I know it did for me too. Now, on the B chord right here, we would have a B mixolydian kind of sound. Uh, the arpeggio that we're going to play here doesn't really reflect that much of a mixolydian kind of thing. But essentially, the footprint of notes we're going to use here is just like what you use over the E chord. 
Okay, that's what you would be using if you were playing this like the other ones here. So, ninth D, eighth G, ninth G, eleventh G, high E string here is seven, nine, and eleven. In this case, I actually don't use that ninth though, but it's there if you want it. Here's what that B lick sounds like. So you can hear in that lick almost right away, it gets into that triplet, 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 triplet kind of sound right there. That breaks you away from just the typical da 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 16th note thing that most arpeggio stuff is based around. So this lick starts off here on the 9th D, 8th G, 9th G, hammered 11 on the G string. And this is where the triplets start. And so on. Now what I'm doing here is I'm starting off by playing that 7 on the high E, that's our root note B. Then what you're going to do here is to just basically play down and up those three notes that you have on the G. You got to play 11, 9, pull off to 8, hammer to 9, hammer to 11. Okay, so notice on the way down there, all you do on the G string is down, up, and let legato carry the rest of it, you know. Just like that. The next part of the lick is essentially the same thing. All you have to do is exchange the 7th fret high E string for the 11th fret high E string. However, because of the location of that thing, this involves a you know, dreaded, insidious little finger roll, which I hate so much. It's going to be hard for a lot of you guys to keep from you know, uh, really slamming that little finger down and hearing all three of those top strings on the 11th fret. I had to do a couple takes just to try to eliminate that myself. But I found if I kind of pivot my wrist back like that, I can get from the tip of my finger on the G to you know more in the meaty middle part of the finger on the high E string without touching the B string like you would if you just tried to slam them down like that. Because even if you don't pick the B, it'll still sympathetically ring out a little bit. Total pain in the ass guitar is a really stupid instrument. So the first one started here on the high E. Next one here is going to be the 11th on the high E. Same stuff on the G though. Then back to that 7 on the high E. And that's the B section, so it sounds like this. One more time. And again, be aware that, that timing is 1 E and a triple 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 really essential to get that groove in there to make this sound cool. And lastly, we end back up on C sharp. So this thing feels just like the first time you played C sharp minor, the second arpeggio that we played today, up until the very end of it. So in other words, start off with the same thing you did before. Same second part. Now the third part here is where it gets a little bit different. It starts off sounding like the fancy, you know, legato-y part and then departs. So basically what I've got right here for this third section, I'm playing that 11th D, 9th G, 11 G, hammering to 13, then the fancy stuff here on the high E string, 9, 12, 11, hammer to 12, pull off to 11, pull off to 9, just like that. 12th B, 9th high E, then we're going to walk down minor pentatonic, C sharp minor pentatonic right here. On the B string, play 12-9. On the G, play 11-9. On the D string, play 11-9. Okay, so it's like this. And end with that 12th fret on the B string here and a whole step bend up to your root note, C sharp. Be sure to give that thing some juicy vibrats at the end. So once more, the entire C sharp minor part. So all together, let's follow through that entire thing right here using those seconds and nines to enhance our tonal palette. Starting off on E. C sharp minor. So 
there you go guys, a super zesty lick that hopefully gives you guys some ideas about expanding your tonal palette beyond the typical root third fifth arpeggio shenanigans we've been doing for decades now. If you find that kind of thing interesting, be sure to check out that Patreon only episode which shows you how to do this through all seven chords in any key and break into some of those groovy modal sounds too. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new lessons coming at you every single week. You guys can follow me on Instagram at BenEllerGuitars, Facebook.com slash UncleBenEller, on my Patreon page at Patreon.com slash BenEllerGuitars. If you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, BenEllerGuitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you lickety-split. Well guys, it's been fun, but it's about time for you guys to get away from this dang old computer and go play some guitar. Less clicking, more picking.